位听众大家好，啊，欢迎大家回到 TKD Channel， 啊，今天呢想跟大家分享的呢，啊，是之前呢在我们公司的一个内部会议上面，我们的呃 Sales 业务部门的一个呃经理呢，高阶经理人呢，跟我们分享了一段 TED 啊、呃、的一段影片。这个 TED 呢，呃，基本上大家很多人应该了解，它就是一关于很多呃很多人利用这个 TED 这个 channel 呢，来传播一些他们的一些呃想法跟理念，或者说他们创造的一些东西啊、呃。这是现在非常世界上非常有名的一个呃短短的差不多十到十五分钟的一段啊、呃、TED 影片。那这个 TED 影片呢，它的它 topic 呢叫做 Building Your In Inner Coach， 这个主讲人叫做 Brad Ledbetter。那我们待会儿呢，我们就放一下这一段影片，然后我再来跟大家谈谈啊、呃、这段影片跟我看后的一些想法。Fifteen coaches, eighty-seven hundred plus wins, two hundred plus conference championships, and twenty-one national championships. The past few years, I've gone across the country to interview and observe these coaches to figure out what it is they all have in common. And if I had to boil it down to one sentence, it would be that they focus less on the result, more on the process. But they recognize that character is what drives the process, which drives the result. What does that mean, and how does that apply to you guys? And how can that improve your life and your performance? Those are the questions I'm going to try to tackle with this talk. So we're going to start here. Do you know the voice inside your head, your innermost thoughts that nobody else has access to except for you? My mentor, Dr. Jim Lair, calls that your private voice. He's going to take it a step further. How helpful is that private voice? Is it a voice you would be proud to have displayed on a wall, particularly during tough times? How does it speak to you? Is it really a coach that is really giving you very strong, positive messages that help you, or is it actually working to break you down, to actually cause you more grief, more pain, more stress? And once you begin to realize that voice is almost always saying something, and then to begin to take more responsibility for how that voice is actually speaking to you, and to realize that. This voice will be the only voice that's with you until your death. We want that voice to be someone who is a contributor to your life. So, if we had to sum up what Jim said, it'd be that your private voice can either help you out or break you down, but it's the only voice that's with you until your death. I want you to put yourself in this situation. You're in a game. Your whole student body is watching you. Things are going bad for you. Things are going bad for your team. What if, in that moment, the thoughts that you were thinking scrolled across the bottom of the scoreboard for everyone in the gym to see? How would that make you feel? The interesting thing about this is when we think negatively, not only are we competing against our opponent, who else are we competing against? Ourselves. So we have to turn our private voice into our inner coach, so that when we go through those tough times, our inner coach. Can guide us through them. What I want to do is I want to show you a real life example of what that looks like, and it's from one of my all-time favorite college basketball games. We're going to pick things up with four seconds left in the game. So Butler has the basketball on the baseline. They're in white. They're down one against Gonzaga, who's in blue. Let's see how this plays out. To inbound the ball again for Butler. Don't remember this, but Hill and Leitner, they allowed him to throw it in. Uh oh, what? A travel is called on Barlow. He lifted his pivot foot. He lifted his pivot foot. There's the pass. But watch this. He dragged his pivot foot. No doubt about it. And now if they don't get an immediate steal, they'll have to foul. Foul, foul right away. And then you got to hope for a dramatic three. Oh boy! Oh, they got it! it. Oh, 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 yes! Oh, oh, I can't believe it! Are you serious about that? That fires me up every time I see it. But here's the deal: the reason I love that is because those last two plays 
were the exact opposite of one another. The first one was an example of failure. The second one was an example of success. So what I want to do is I want to watch those clips one more time, but this time I want to call your attention to Butler's head coach, Brad Stevens. So you're going to see him. He's right there. I want you to keep your eye on him the whole time. Watch his body language as his player travels. So how would you describe it? I think it was pretty calm. Would you guys agree? Now, 99 out of 100 games, when your player travels, when you guys are down one with four seconds left, you're going to lose that game. But what did he do? He calmly walked over to the bench, subbed his player in, and got ready mentally for what? The next play. So now, I'd like to call your attention to Brad Stevens one more time. I want you to watch his reaction as his player hits the game-winning shot. You gotta hope for a dramatic three. Oh boy! Oh, oh, he got it. It. oh, oh, oh yes! yes! Oh, I can't believe it! How awesome is that? So the reason I love that is because what? He handles it exactly the same way as he handled the failure. 那这一段影片呢基本上这个TED这个主讲人他interview访谈了好像上百位的大学教练来访问他们谈谈看到底是什么理由让他们成为一个成功的一个教练而他访问了这么多的教练之后呢他等于说做了一个小小的一个归纳
在外太空没有重力的状况下，你原子笔、钢笔没有办法写，因为原子笔跟钢笔的理论就是，呃，原子笔笔翼呢，然后这个原子笔水呢，它是顺着重力往下低落，然后再写在附着在你的纸张上面。那在外太空是没有重力的，这些原子笔翼呢是没有办法往下低落。呃，相反的，它可能会到处漂，呃，到处漂浮，你不知道，所以没办法用原子笔跟钢笔来写字。那很多人就好像，呃，这故事就是说很多工程师啊，很多设计，很多这个 NASA 的这个研究人员呢、啊，就要想办法怎么样研究出一种原子笔或钢笔来啊、呃、解决这个问题。当然，最后结果就是啊，你用铅笔解决这个问题就好了啊、呃。那但是我要强调的是说，在这这些研究人员、这些工程师的努力之下，他们想要解决这个问题，你当然可以。有很方便的方法解决这个问题，就是用铅笔。也有可能你可以用很多的理论，你用很多的技术，用很多的这个呃呃想象的空间，来发展出另外一种可以在外太空写字的原子笔。那这两个的中间的这个，也许效能来讲，铅笔又简单又便宜又方便，而原子笔那种设计出来的非常非常啊、呃、昂贵、非常科学、非常呃也许不好用的一种原子笔。也许它的价值跟它的使用性没那么便利，但是它在这个研究的过程当中，我们是不是学到了很多东西？举另外一个例子，爱迪生，呃，他发明了电灯呢，这是他的说法。那他也说他好像失败了一千次。那啊、呃，有记者就问他说：“你失败了一千次，那你不会觉得很沮丧、很灰心吗？”爱迪生说：“不会啊，我发。”我虽然失败了一千次，但是我事实上我是把它看作我找到了一千种不会让电灯工作的这种原料，或者是它的材质。我并没有把它当作失败，而是说我找出了这么多它不会工作的一些原理或者是物质。这就是一种正面内心的一个教练给你的力量。你怎样注重你的整个过程，而不只是看重你的结果？你知道每个人。啊，都会在做每个决定之后，你会有很多的这个你要努力的一个时间，跟你要啊让这件事情发展的一个做法，而最后结果出来，不论对或错，或是好或坏，你这个中间这个执行的过程到底有没有让你学到什么，有没有让你得到什么，或是让嗯整个呃自己未来在或者说对于社会的 value 有没有任何的改变，这就是所谓的 process 重于结果的一个很重要的一个指标。当然，呃，我们又可以再看另外一个例子。这个另外这个例子呢，呃，就是微波炉的发明。微波炉的发明呢，它是由啊、呃、一个美国人，他叫做啊、呃、Perry Spencer， 他是在嗯、呃、等于说是一九啊一几一几一九二几的时候吧，他可能就是他是在一个叫美国的一个 Radar 公司任职，这个是一个做等于说雷达的一种设备的一种国防设备的一个公司。那他是。啊、呃，本来是在研究一种所谓的电磁管，给雷达使用的电磁管，在一个某一个不经意的一个呃时间点，他在实验室，他忽然发现他爱吃的这个巧克力棒啊溶解了。那溶解了，当时他就怀疑两个原因咯，第一个原因就是啊，裤子里面或者他曾经去外面散步或者遇到太阳晒一晒，可能巧克力就融化了。第二个原因，哎，就是哎，会不会是我实验室的某些东西造成我的巧克力的温度升高而融化？当然，我想大部分人都会觉得说，啊，一定没什么大不了了，大概就是刚刚啊，怎么样让这个巧克力接触到高温的东西，所以它融化了。但是这个 Perry Spencer 呢，他是基本上是一个啊非常啊有求知欲望，而且也很愿意不愿意孜很愿意孜孜不倦去学习或是了解探讨一些啊东西本质的一个工程师。那啊，他就是仔细就仔细去推敲，后来他真的发现了，哎。这个是他的电磁管造成的，他还利用，因为他第一次利用这个想啊、呃、想法来验证的时候，他就是用一包玉米花，就那玉米花真的啪，就是等于说爆出了玉米花。那后来他用这个来做事，做那个把这个鸡蛋加热，也让鸡蛋成功的就啊、呃、热破了。所以他后来就等于发明了这个，等于说是一个微波炉的观念，利用电磁管来做一个微波炉的观念。但是后来啊、呃，真正把这个微波炉变成一个家用食品的这种啊、呃、电器呢，是由日本的这个。呃，夏普公司的前身呢，叫做早川公司。那他们呢，呃，是真正的是在一九呃六二年的时候，他们真正的利用这个技术来拓展出来这个家庭使用微波炉的这个呃商品。这就是我要说的，就是说，当我们努力在往某一个方向在做某些事情的时候，在这个过程当中，我们是不是有利用这中间啊、呃、学习的，或者说改进的，或者说是困难挑战的，或者说是问题解决的？这个过程里面学到什么东西，或者创造出什么东西，人类有很多的东西都是在这种不经意的，或者说是在啊、呃，这应该是说不经意，但是是在一个进化、一个 process 的一个过程中而产生出来的一些结果。
，而这些结果也许会有一些一些让人意想不到的功能，而是在我们那个过程之中，并没有真正设想到会发生的一些现象。假如说我们人生不断的只是说我晓得直接由呃起始点跳到哦结果点，而中间的过程不注意的话，很多事情也许很多人类美好的一些发明，或者说人类的一些呃进步的一些。呃，工具或者一些产产品就不会出现在我们的眼前。那当然，我也不是说每个人都要说要完全依靠说这些奇迹式的发现来证明你这段过程的一个呃它的一个呃效能，而是说每个人要要 enjoy， 希望大家都能够 enjoy 你在工作或者说你在努努力处理某些事情的这个过程，这个过程会让你成长，会让你找到一些你正面的一些。啊，能量，然后让你不断的能够往前迈进，不论结果怎么样，就像球队的球赛，最后结果也许是输，也许是赢，只有两种结果。但是你整个的过程，你的球员的表现、球员的认真度、你球球队的战术的执行力，这些都是被大家看到的。你真正懂得这些啊、呃、内在的这个门道的人，他会看到你这些每个球员的努力，而不只是在看你这个球队啊今年赢了多少场，输了多少场，不只是看这样，而是在整个过程的。呃，重要性也会在这样的一个过程当中会被发现，这是我今天想要跟大家分享的呃这段小小的故事啊、呃，透过这段影片啊、呃、跟这个球赛，希望说大家能够能够自己倾听倾听自己内在的一个 coach 给你的力量，然后呢啊、呃、好好注意注意你每一步每一步的这个过程，而结果自然会随着你的努力而有所。不一样的一个结果，或者说有什么样的结果发生，也希望大家都能够有个好的结果。但是啊、呃，不论如何，大家是要啊、呃、让自己的啊、呃、人生都要充满了不同的想象的空间。这是我跟大家分享的一个小故事。好，今天节目就进行到这。